we didn't study red wine. We, we came about it through a, a different route. And we were studying yeast, actually. Um, and we're also studying the human enzyme in, in test tubes. And we were trying to figure out, uh, out of thousands of molecules, which ones might activate the enzyme. And, you know, obviously we, we were thinking in those days, as we still are, that you can't genetically modify a human easily, um, ethically. It's much easier if you can take a, a, a safe supplement or a molecule or a drug. And so with Conrad Howitz, my collaborator, uh, we looked at many molecules and found a, a set of about 20 different molecules, most of them from plants in the class of what's called polyphenols, that were apparently activating this enzyme in the test tube. And we spent about six months trying to, to prove that wrong because it was quite an unexpected thing to be able to activate CERT1 by more than 10 times activity. And it, you know, it's when, when you discover something that crazy, you've got to try your best to disprove it because a lot of people are going to come after you, uh, scientists are that way. But nevertheless, we couldn't disprove it, so we published that resveratrol activates CERT1 quite effectively. When you put it on to yeast cells, they live longer and that requires the sirtuin gene that it was targeting. And then, uh, so we put that out there and that got a lot of attention, but then the really big paper was three years later where we showed that mice could be tricked into believing that they were calorie restricted, that they were on a lean diet, even though they were eating a Western fatty diet. And the mice were still fat, but their organs were beautiful and clean and their, the physiology and their molecular biology was telling us that they were actually as healthy as the, the lean ones. And then um, we looked at their lifespan and they lived just as long as the, the healthy ones. And uh, you know, a lot of people have, have you know, moved on and, and forgotten that that was the first safe molecule to effectively mimic fasting. Um, then there was this uh, disagreement about how resveratrol is actually activating CERT1. And it was a question, you know, again, uh, scientists like to do this, but you know, I like to joke that scientists fight because the stakes are so low. Um, my technology was licensed. Uh, my technology was licensed to, to GlaxoSmithKline, which at the time was the number two pharma company in the world. Mm -hmm. And we had a patent. They had a patent that they licensed that blocked anyone else activating sirtuins. Uh, and then so Pfizer got into it and said, "Well, that mechanism is wrong, and the patent is invalid." Uh, and that was a, a big food fight for a number of years. Uh, and I was sandwiched in between the number one and number two pharmaceutical company in the world. Um, and, you know, the media went, went crazy on this too. We, we had raised the, the sales of red wine by 30%, so we got a lot of attention for that. Um, but then it's also interesting that what if it's wrong? Wouldn't that be an amazing scandal? Uh, and so after many years of research that's con actually still continuing in my lab, uh, we, we came back and proved that we were right through some really hard and, uh, and I think really important work that we published in the journal Science in 2013. And then we have some crystal structures and we now understand very in great detail how resveratrol works to activate the enzyme. Um, we also made a mouse that doesn't get activated by resveratrol just by changing one amino acid in the protein. Okay. And that mouse is not responding to resveratrol. It doesn't live longer when you give it the molecule. You know, now I'm talking a lot more about resveratrol because um, that's all behind us, fortunately. I'd love to have those drugs go back into those uh, human studies. We actually had activators that were a thousand times more active than resveratrol, and they went into patients, and we've published that, or Jim Kruger in New York published that those molecules, one of them at least, works in psoriasis in patients. And, uh, you know, these, these molecules are anti-inflammatory. CERT1 is an anti-inflammatory molecule. Um, and so, yeah, those molecules right now sit on the shelf at GlaxoSmithKline, and I'd love to restart those trials because I think they have huge, um, there's a huge opportunity not just to treat inflammatory disorders, but really any age-related disease.